and welcome to another video. Now this morning we're somewhere a little bit different. We're at the outskirts, or on the edge of Willington Power Station. That's just outside of Derby, around about eight or nine miles. Now we believe there may be a little chance that we can get inside and have a look around the cooling towers. So I'm on my way over there now. If we get inside, you can come with me and we'll have a look. At Willington Power Station it was comprised of two almost independent generating stations but they were both situated on the same site. Now they shared very few facilities but they did share coal and water supply and they were known as Willington A and Willington B and the A Power Station was the one nearest to the road adjacent to the site. It was early 1954 that work started on constructing the A Power Station and there were four generating units and these had a 100 megawatt capacity. There was also a pair of 425 foot high chimneys and two cooling towers. Now the B power station that had a much larger 200 megawatt capacity and it comprised of only two units which in turn equaled the output of the original A power station with only half of the equipment. There was only one the larger chimneys required for this power station but there was an additional three cooling towers constructed. The three additional cooling towers for the newer B power station now these were set at right angles to the side and the north of the pair from the A power station so it creates that unique V shape. So Willington power station it consists of five cooling towers that's what remains on this site and it is in Derbyshire it was commissioned in 1957 and decommissioned in 1999. Now the site is totally demolished aside from the five cooling towers, also known as the five ladies, and they're still standing. There's a lot of um, debate and plans what might happen to them, what might not happen to them. But for now they're still standing, so let's have a look around inside, come on. So this large pool of water at the bottom, now this was a collection basin, so this is where the cold water would have come down and it would have exited the cooling tower site. Now this area here is where the dry air would have come in, dry air for the cooling towers and above that was like a fill material. And above the fill materials there used to be spray nozzles, now these have all gone. So we see the cooling tower with all its supports and all of what's inside it and what it has to offer. But what if, what if we could take all of this out and see what it's like with nothing in? Come with me.
So yeah, that was fantastic to see inside of what a cooling tower looks like with all its, with all its construction and all its bits and bobs inside it. Uh, it's interesting to note then that these two cooling towers have been completely stripped out. Sorry about the sun's glare there. So it's just a gravel base. It's been the, the base has been filled in, so the water and catchment area is gone. All the internals are gone. They're very very clean on the inside. Those three cooling towers. The one was in at the beginning of the video was one at the very end there. But the other two on the left of it, in the middle and on the left, they're absolutely full of everything apart from the fans. It appears. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this short little video. We'll take one last little look inside and I'll leave you with some shots and some images. Subscribe below, take care, I'll see you next time, bye bye.